Hello, welcome. Uh, my name is Nick Leon, and I will be presenting on A New Age of Onem, your guide to apps for blind and low vision travelers. I'd first like to start off by just telling you a little bit about myself. I am a uh, graduate of Western Michigan University and a certified Onem specialist at Bosma Enterprises. At Bosma, we work with adults who are typically reasonable recently blind or visually impaired and are looking to go back to work in school. So in my instruction I uh, definitely try to incorporate a lot of the new technology that's coming out and making a big impact in our field but I also like to emphasize a lot of the proven techniques as well. In my life in general I tend to use a lot of applications, mobile applications for different areas of my life, and I definitely feel like it's a huge asset for people who are blind and visually impaired, so I think this is a very important topic to have a good understanding of. So first let me start off by telling you a little bit about what we're going to cover in this presentation. I am first going to define orientation and mobility and some of the key terminology that will be necessary for this presentation. I will then explain how the apps are used in o &M. Uh, The majority of the presentation will focus on identifying some of the prominent apps in this field and discussing the key features of those apps. And then lastly, I plan on addressing the role of service providers in introducing these apps and including some resources as well. So what is ONAP? I have a long textbook definition here that I'll read through real quick. It's orientation refers to knowledge of one's distance and direction relative to things observed or remembered in the surroundings and keeping track of these spatial relationships as they change during locomotions. Mobility is the term used to describe the act of moving through space in a safe and efficient manner. Together, the two terms result in purposeful and directed movement through and within the surrounding environment. That is from the textbook Foundations of Orientation and Mobility, and obviously it's a very long and descriptive definition. Um, in simpler terms, orientation is being aware of one's surroundings or being aware of where someone is in space, and mobility is traveling through that space safely. So, for the purposes of this presentation, though, I like to distinguish that definition because the majority of apps focus on, all of the apps focus on orientation. So apps are designed for orientation. Smartphones are not a mobility aid. Maybe eventually in the future they will be, but at this point, a long cane or dog guide must still be used. And what I mean by that is apps are not designed to detect curbs or stairs or to alert people to any obstacles in their path, that task must still be completed by using a long cane or guide dog. The apps, however, are designed to help orient a person or give them information about their environment. And I always emphasize with my client, and I think that any traveler should exercise caution. This actually goes for sighted or non-sighted people when using a smartphone um, because it can be distracting. So let's identify some of the key terminology that will be necessary for this presentation. So of course the first one is mobile applications or apps for short. It applies to a lot of different areas but in our case we're talking about software that is designed to be used on a smartphone or a tablet. So mobile applications are designed to be used on a smaller screen essentially. VoiceOver and TalkBack are two programs that I'll be speaking about. Um, they are smartphone speak, speech functionality. VoiceOver is the speech function on iPhones, and TalkBack is the one on Android phones. Turn by turn directions is um, a term, term used for navigation. Um, it means when Directions are continually presented as you're traveling to a destination. Point of interest is a term, that, or POI is a term that I'll use several times throughout this presentation, but is also used often 
in the description of these various apps by the developers as well. So it's any specific location that may be useful. It could be bank, transit, restaurants, etc. Additionally, we'll be talking a lot about Global Positioning System, or GPS. Um, I'll discuss more about the implications to travel, but in general, GPS is a satellite system that provides location information anywhere in the world. And then lastly, environmental awareness. This term could be used in several different ways, but for terms of this presentation, we're discussing knowledge of surrounding area, including landmarks and geographical information. So, how are apps used in ONM? Obviously, there's a lot of different ways apps can be used for people who are visually impaired, but the ways in ONM can are um, pretty specific. So, the first is planning routes in a new or unfamiliar area. Um, or maybe planning an alternate route in an area that's already been traveled. So it can be very important to know ahead of time what the route you'll be traveling to a destination. So apps are extremely helpful for this task. In addition, they're helpful for actually navigating the route. So this can be done by either turn by turn or list directions. So again, turn by turn meaning directions that are continually presented. They can also be helpful for locating POIs or points of interest, so nearby points of interest if people are looking for a bank or a restaurant near the location that they're at. Environmental awareness, so if you're trying to learn a new area, a new city, it's very helpful to just go and explore the city and apps can be a very helpful way to do that for someone who is visually impaired and not able to see the different locations and landmarks. Spatial updating, uh, meaning updating the things that are around you in space as you're moving through it or as you're walking through a destination. And then also intersection information. Now this isn't necessarily going to tell you whether or not it's a stoplight or stop sign controlled intersection, but rather if it's a two-way or four-way intersection um, and possibly in some cases if it's a, a one-way or two-way intersection, or a one-way street as well. For purposes of this presentation, I divided up the applications into several categories. So the four categories that I, will, that I have the apps divide up into are navigation, environmental awareness, transit, and other. There's definitely some overlap between the apps. Some apps, you know, do navigation and environmental awareness as well, or transit. Um, but I think this will help focus what some of the primary functions of these apps are as well. And I'll touch more on what those cat how I define those categories. So first, I'd like to start off by giving a disclaimer. There are 19 apps included in this presentation, but there are many, many more in all of the categories. So I've tried to include the most prominent apps in the field, but obviously each person defer, prefers different apps, and, and some of the apps that, um, that may not be on this presentation may still be very helpful, but these are definitely some of the core apps that I think everybody should know. Um, and I definitely always encourage people to read the reviews on the apps to find out you know, if it's going to serve the purpose that you need it for. So let's first start off by talking about navigation apps. So navigation apps use GPS or global positioning and maps, online maps or downloaded maps to provide location information and give directions. Uh, the directions can be announced, again, turn by turn or viewed as a list. Often it uses cellular data um, because that updates the maps more regularly, but the maps can also be downloaded and used offline in many cases. So first, before I go into the apps in this category, I just want to touch on GPS because I think it has several implications in using these apps. Some people, sometimes people have unrealistic expectations of what these apps can do in terms of navigation. So GPS is only accurate within a certain distance. It's plus or minus 50 feet in general. Um, that can be dependent on several factors, though. 
it uses an array of satellites and sometimes those satellites can be down or it may not be in the proximity of being able to view the person. Um, so that can affect its reliability. So if you are trying to locate a destination or a client is trying to locate a destination and the app says they're there, that can be plus or minus 50 feet and it's still really important to have good orientation mobility skills to get them the rest of the distance to that place and, and make sure that, that the location that they intend to be at. Okay, so for the apps that we're going to cover in this category, I have a table that I made um, that lists the different apps by name and the platform that they're on, so either Apple or Android, and then the price as well. Um, the, the prices were updated you know, prior to making this presentation, but obviously they can change. Sometimes they go on discount. Um, so for these, the apps that I've included on this section are Google Maps, which is available on Apple or Android. It is a, a, a Google-based app, though. Apple Maps, both of those are free. C9, which is available on Apple. Nearby Explorer, which is available now. It used to just be available on Android, but as of yesterday, it is available on Apple as well. And Blind Square, which is available on Apple. The prices are also listed, and I will provide resources at the end of this presentation for all of these apps. So let's first start off with Google and Apple Maps. I have kind of grouped them together for this category because they serve much of the same purpose and, and have very similar functionality. Um, they are by far the most commonly used GPS apps. Most people probably use them in their everyday life, um, but there are some different features that are available that are helpful for people who are blind or vision impaired that I'll discuss as well. Um, they also have several, several features besides just navigation, so I also include these apps in the transit category that I'll identify later. So Apple Maps works with VoiceOver and with TalkBack. So on the, again, on the iPhone devices, it uses VoiceOver, and on the Android, Android devices, it uses TalkBack. They also offer turn-by-turn -turn directions or list view, um, regardless of whether you're traveling by foot or vehicle. Um, and I'll discuss the, the different options that it offers as far as transportation methods. So I have a video here that gives a demonstration of some of the basic functionality of the app. And this is um, Google Maps, but it's recorded off of an iPhone. So I'm going to go ahead and play this video. Google Maps. Google Maps. Query. Search Google Maps. Query. Text field. Is that a key? Character mode. Search. In A. R. Arby's. Arby's. Clear. Button. Search. Button. 5607 W. Arby's. 5000. Directions to Arby. D directions to Arby's. But Directions to Arby. Ride services. 7 minutes. But Selected. Walking mode. 16 minutes. But 16 minutes. 0. 16 minutes. 0. 0.8 me. Via start. But your location. Head north on Zionsville Road toward W81st Street. Your locate start button. Head Search. north on Zionsville Road toward West 81st Street. All right, so as you can see in the video, it works really nicely with voiceover. Um, gives all the detailed information. It's a very simple interface, which allows you to navigate through it easily. Um, it also uses walking directions, which can be very helpful for blind and low vision travelers, not just driving directions, obviously. And that can be used from Siri as well. You can actually ask Siri for walking directions. 
and it'll choose that option. Um, it gives a map as well as the list view of di uh, directions. Um, and then you, in the video you saw that once the route is actually started, Google Maps narrates the step-by-step -step in addition to voiceover reading what's on the screen. Sometimes people prefer to turn off the voiceover once they've started the route so there's not too much voices going on. Um, and it does give you detailed information about the address, distance to the location, etc. One of the drawbacks of this app, however, that it does um, only update you every so often. So some of the other apps that we'll discuss give you more updating on when you're approaching your destination. So this one, you know, shortly before you're getting ready to make your next turn or the next step in the directions, it'll tell you. Um, but the other apps do it more often. Google Maps. Okay, the next two apps that we'll be discussing are Scene Eye and Nearby Explorer. So these are both apps that are designed specifically for the blind and visually impaired. Um, they're definitely the most powerful GPS apps that are available on the phone. They offer lots of different features, um, but they do come at a price. The, the Scene Eye is a yearly subscription of $39.99 and you can buy a full version for $300. However, they do sometimes offer discounts to educators. And Nearby Explorer is a one-time fee of $79.99. However, on the Google platform, they do have a free version called Nearby Explorer Online that has many of the same features, but requires cellular connectivity. So in general, these apps allow users to plan routes, gives turn-by-turn -turn directions, and locates points of interest. So specifically the CNI, which is the iPhone-based application, that one is developed by Sendero, who has been in the field for a long time developing accessible GPS options. Um, specifically, they developed the Trekker and Trekker Breeze, which is a handheld GPS device developed for people who are blind and visually impaired and um, just really a great tool. However, you know, not always a little expensive for some people. So, so this offers, you know, kind of a, a iPhone based platform that has a lot of the same technology and features. So again, it has route planning, you can search for points of interest, and it also offers a really cool look around function where you can turn that on and go through an area and explore, you know, an area and be alerted of, of different locations that are around and you can set those to um, different categories. Uh, in addition, it gives detailed turn-by-turn -turn directions, so not just where you're supposed to turn, it gives you more updates more often, and also tells you information about the intersections. So I have a quick video again demonstrating some of the features of, of this app specifically. CNI GPS XT. Double tap to open. CN routes. Menu. Location. Menu. Back button near. 8020 Zions Hill Road. Indianapolis. Indiana. 46268. Direction south. Intersection ahead. On Zions Hill Road. 392 feet. Three way. W 80th Street right and Science Hill Road are head and behind. Nearest POI, nonprofit, Bosma Enterprises. Location accuracy, within 197 feet. Altitude, about 848 feet. Look around wand, off, button. Routes, menu, back button. Route create, look around wand, create route to where? Select, locate, select, history, button, 
address. But points of interest. But road to home. But points of interest. But text field is at a P K N P R A back button. Points of interest. Panera Bread. Panera Bread. 6050 W 86 Street, Indianapolis, 0 0.9 miles northwest. But back button. Root creation. Look up Panera Bread. 6000 pedestrian. But pedestrian. Back button. Root 1.3 miles to destination. Estimated time 25 minutes. Facing direction is south. Turn around. Start going north on Zionsville Road toward W 81st Street. In 0 0.7 miles. Slide left to stay on Zionsville Road. Okay, so as you can see in the, in the video, it gives you a lot more detailed information than what is offered on Google Maps or Apple Maps. Um, it tells you information about where you're located, which direction you're facing, and then in addition to letting you put in an address, it also offers points of interest that can be searched by and in addition to telling you the address, tells you what direction that is located. Um, it is working, in this case, it's working with the, the voiceover, so it doesn't have a self-voicing option. It's designed to work with voiceover really well, and you can either use voiceover or you can visually read it. You can see it's you know really nice, simple interface with high contrast, black on white. Okay, so Nearby Explorer is the other option. Um, it is developed by American Printing House for the Blind. And what that means is it's available through quota funds. If you use the quota program through your school system, that is something that is able to be purchased for students. Um, there is a free version available that's referred to as Nearby Explorer Online, but you must be connected to the internet, and it doesn't have all the features that Nearby Explorer has. Um, the... App was originally developed for the Android platform, but it is now available on the Apple platform as well, too. So it is very comparable to CNI, um, has many of the same features, and it is, in my opinion, just as powerful. Um, I do want to point out one unique feature that it has called GeoBeam that allows you to kind of hone in on a point of interest, and I have a video that can demonstrate this. Hello, I'm Larry Skukon here to talk to you today about the GeoBeam feature of Nearby Explorer. Nearby Explorer is an Android GPS app that runs on any modern smartphone running Android. What GeoBeam is is a way to point your phone to objects in the environment and get tactile and audio feedback about what they are. So you'll get a tone telling you how close it is, a vibration when you're pointing at it, and then an announcement of what it is and how far it is away. And I'll show you how it works. To engage GeoBeam, you position the phone so that the screen is to the side and you point. So there's Third Lutheran Church, 148 yards, and, and my phone's vibrating. As long as I'm pointing to that, I could follow this vibration all the way to that church. So let me move around a little bit. American Printing House for the left for 18 yards. And again, you may think, well, that's funny. You're right in front of American Printing House for the Blind. It's not 32 yards that way, but that's where it's marked at on the maps. So let's keep turning. United Crescent Hill Ministry, 87 yards. Hill Top Tavern, 179 yards. <laughs> I want to Jones Realtors at 323 yards. So we'll just keep... Environmental Safety, Kentucky School for the Blind, 145 yards. So there's Kentucky School for the Blind, 145 yards. Dutton's Bakery, 290 yards. Busman's Bakery, 290 yards. Third Lutheran Church, 100 yards. And back to Third Lutheran Church. 
So that's our quick tip on how to use the Geo Bean feature of Nearby Explorer. Reporting to you live from the front of APH, this is Larry Skidcup. Thank you. So again, that's a just a unique feature on the app called GeoBeam, and it is something you know that's clearly specifically developed for someone who's blind and vision impaired. Okay, so the um, last app in this category that I want to discuss is Blind Square. Um, I will say this is is definitely one of the most widely used apps on the market. Um, probably the only reason I didn't say that this is you know, one of the, the most powerful is because it does use a third-party navigation. So it actually, you still need another navigation app to, to be guided to a place. Um, however, it works really well in tandem with Google Maps or several other different options. Um, what happens is while you're using it, once you open up the navigation function, you're guided by Google Maps, but Blind Square over that updates you with more information like the you know more often the distance to the location as well as intersection information so again it gives you information about your current location as well as POIs um, one other unique feature that this has is called a simulation option so this is really cool if you're trying to explore a new area um, what you can do is you can pick a location. Say you're going to a city for a conference. You can set your simulated location as your hotel, let's say. And then what you can do is you can explore that area using the app as if you were at that location. So you can detect all the different points of interest nearby and then view the route based on the hotel being your location, so you can really kind of plan ahead on how, what places you want to go for maybe lunch, or if you need to go to a bank while you're at the at the hotel, anything like that. So really, really helpful function for pre-planning routes or a trip. Um, in addition, Blind Square is currently developing um, indoor navigation. They, you know, have it. They have the, the app and, and everything included already. It's just still kind of in the early stages of uh, being sold and distributed to the public. But I definitely see this as, as where the, the future of traveling is going because currently the GPS options do not work inside. So you can't use them at a mall or any airport, anything like that. So um, Line Square is leading this technology, so indoor navigation, and they've already set it up at, at several locations throughout the state, or I'm sorry, throughout the country, um, and I believe the closest location to us there is at um, O'Hare, I believe they are putting it in or have already put it in. So I have a video demonstrating some of the basic functions of the Blind Square GPS. Your location. Your location. Nearest crossing is Scionsville Road and 81st Street. Distance 290 feet at 7 o'clock. You are at Bosman Enterprises. Address is 8020 Scionsville Road, Indianapolis. Heading south. Around me. 3 Amir. 0 0.20 miles at 11 o'clock. Kakuse, Inc. 0 0.46 miles at 10 o'clock. Starbucks. 0 0.82 miles at 6 o'clock.
temperature 73 degrees. Wind speed 5 miles per hour. Rain throughout the day. Searching my places. Found three places within radius of 1.24 miles. Marsh Supermarket is selected as a destination. Starting navigation application Google Maps. Head north on Scienceville Road toward West 81st Street. Okay, so in that video you saw some of the basic functionality. functionality. Line Square does have self-voicing, so I did not have the voiceover function turned on for that. So some of the things weren't announced during that, um, but you can also turn on voiceover to have more information about the app listed, such as the categories or actions. Okay, so the next category that we'll be talking about are environmental awareness apps. So these apps still use GPS, however, they focus more on environmental awareness. So being able to um, get information about your surrounding environment, such as points of interest or landmarks. Um, it doesn't, most of the apps do not have any option to use navigation to a place. Um, it's it's more about familiarizing yourself with an area. So again, I have a table listed with some of the different options on this app. There is iMove, which is a Apple or iPhone-based app. Ariadne GPS, also an Apple-based map. Look Around, also an Apple-based map. And then Around Me, which is available on Apple or Android. So the first one, iMove, identifies locations, nearby points of interest, um, and one of the other nice things is it provides notifications. So it can um, give you information, you know, if you can set it to different categories to find out, you know, what restaurants are around. Um, and it's got a really, really simple and nice interface that works well with VoiceOver. One of the unique features about this app is that it allows users to make speech notes for locations. So if you have something specific like, you know, a business that you really like or maybe your work, you can, you know, make a speech note saying work or, you know, um, or maybe even something to alert you to, um, you know, you're approaching the post office and there's a speed bump in front of there. Something to that effect. Ariadne GPS is actually um, developed overseas in Italy, I believe. Um, but it's an excellent, excellent GPS and it's at a really affordable price, only $5.99 for that app. Uh, it's designed to work with VoiceOver and does a really nice job of that. It gives you location, points of interest, and it gives you some other environmental info. One of the, the really unique things about this is that you can read the streets kind of by dragging your finger across the screen. So it kind of allows you to discover an area more in depth as if you were using a tactile map on your phone. So as you drag your finger over the streets, it would announce the streets and you can kind of see how they're oriented in the area, not visually. So Look Around is a, another app that's developed by Sendero. So again, that's the developers who did the Trekker Breeze. Um, this one is, is just kind of a bare bones app. So it's, it's a free app um, and it, it does three main things. Offers the location information, points of interest, and gives you your nearest cross street. Um, one of the kind of nice features about this is it, it a, updates the info when you shake the phone. So it's kind of a nice way just to 
kind of be able to quickly update where you are, maybe what direction you're facing or where you, you know, if, if it's a route that you're already kind of familiar with, you can use this app just to kind of make sure that you're still on track and get information about what's nearby. And then the last one is Around Me. Around Me actually isn't designed for people who are vision impaired, but it's got such a, a nice interface that it works really, really well for people who are vision impaired. So it offers categories, categorized points of interest, kind of like Yelp. Um, so on the screen, you can see it lists um, banks, bars, coffee shops, favorites, gas stations, hospitals. Um, and in each section, you can search into that, and it'll give you all the ones that are near by. Um, one very cool feature about this is that it has a live view. Um, I have a, a picture of it, and it actually allows the user to kind of visually see where things are located. This is actually just pictures from my office, but you can see it has little floating icons almost that depend on where you point it, almost like a radar, it tells you where those different locations are at. Um, so if you, you know, if you are vision impaired or completely blind and you're trying to find a location you know you're pretty close but maybe got a little disoriented or turned around you can use this feature to kind of point until you know that you're facing the right place so it's similar to the the geo beam feature that is on the nearby explorer and while this from the pictures you can see it's a visual based application it actually works really well with voiceover. Okay, so the next category that we're gonna discuss is transit apps. So transit apps are, you know, in this category are kind of designed specifically to give locate the transit options available or the times. Um, now, not all of the apps that are in this category are available in all cities. However, for this presentation, I did choose ones that are all available in Indiana. Um, and not all of them have real-time information that's very much dependent on the transportation system. Um, in Indianapolis, um, it, it depends on whether the app is updated by other people. Um, the actual, you know, real-time information isn't populated by the transportation system itself. However, there may be that option in the future. Um, also, there are custom apps for larger metropolitan areas like Chicago um, or San Francisco or New York that are designed um, specifically for those areas. So if someone is traveling, that can be, you know, really helpful to kind of look ahead to see if there's any apps like that in that area. So for this, I have a... Um, another table that has apps listed. I've included Google and Apple Maps on this because they do offer several different transit options. Um, Move It, Rome to Rio, and then I've also included Uber or Lyft, which actually isn't technically used to locate transit information, but I had to include it on here because it's such a helpful resource for people who are blind and visually impaired. Um, and the nice thing about this is all of these apps are available on both platforms and are all free. So Google and Apple Maps, in addition to navigation, Google and Apple Maps can be used for transit. Uh, this includes bus and private transportation, such, such as Uber. Um, in other city, uh, cities, it can even include metro subway stations. Um, and it gives you access to the bus schedule, but also allows you to figure out what transfers are required for a route and offers several different options so you can figure out what the best one is or maybe which one requires the least amount of walking. If it's an area that you're not familiar with, that can be a huge asset for a traveler that's blind or visually impaired. Um, and you can also set the time of departure so it allows you to see the schedule, whether it's, you know, whether you're looking ahead to kind of plan your route for the weekend, because that can vary. So I have a um, picture of the Google Maps that just kind of has the bus route listed. Um, so for this one, it, you know, it kind of lists that the 37 route is, 37 route. It gives you the time frame 
tells you where you have to walk and, and, and in what direction. So it gives you the direction for that. And then it gives you the stops and all the different stops on the location. So for this one, this is a very long route from Northwest Indy where we're located all the way to downtown and has 73 stops on the way. Okay, so move it. Um, Searches for the best routes to a destination using various transit options. Um, it finds nearby stops and gives you real-time updates based on information that's populated by other riders. Um, so, it, you know, it also updates, you know, your estimated time of arri arrival and um, gives you, you know, if someone populates it, you know, so if someone reports it to the app, it can list things like incidences or delays or construction that may be going on. So I have the video um, that is produced by the company that just kind of shows some of the basic functionality of the app that I'll go ahead and play. Say hello to Move It, your local transit app. Live departure and arrival times keep your life in sync with your mobility. Share your local knowledge to keep fellow riders up to date on service changes and delays. Discover the best way to get there, wherever your day takes you. All right, and I've also included a couple of screenshots from this app because uh, one really unique thing about this is it gives you kind of a stops remaining notification. So one of the things that, you know, often I have to work with my clients on is, you know, telling them to kind of keep track of how many stops they have left. Now in Indianapolis, we do have now on, on the majority of the buses GPS announcements, um, but sometimes those can be hard to hear. So it tells you, you know, what stop you're at, Sometimes that can be hard to hear, and that's not available in all areas. So what this app does, it actually you know lists the apps and tells you how many more stops you have to that area, gives you an estimated time frame, and you can set it to let you know, okay, get off in two stops, get off in one stop, get off now. And that can be a really, really helpful feature for people who are blind and visually. Uh, Rome to Rio is the next app that I wanted to discuss, and it is an app that is not necessarily as well de developed for people who are blind and visually impaired. Um, what's unique about this app is it is not only does it give you all the best routes to destination, but it also includes kind of uh, you know your other transit options that that some of the the apps don't include, such as Megabus or Greyhound and even airfare. Um, it gives you uh, the it gives you the uh, um, the updated schedules um, of, of when these will be leaving and also it gives you the estimated cost. So on here I have kind of a pricing of the locations from where we're located at in Indianapolis to Chicago. So you can see on the screenshot, it lists Megabus, a train, Greyhound, driving or flying to Chicago O'Hare or Midway, and gives the estimated cost for it. So um, if you were to select on those options, um, it would give you more detailed information about that. And then underneath, you can see the estimated time. For each option. So this would typically be something that would use if someone's looking to make a, a large longer destination um, you know besides just you know something maybe in city. Okay and then the last apps that I just want to include on this page um, they're not necessarily transit discovery apps but um, but they are used um, for transit they're Uber and Lyft, which are ride-sharing apps. Most people are familiar with these. Um, I wanted to include it on there because I think it's important to note that, you know, 
while the apps are pretty user-friendly, often people who are blind or visually impaired need instruction on the app. Um, it's cheaper and more efficient typically than taxi cabs, so it's a really huge asset for people who are blind and visually impaired. Um, I tend to recommend it if people are able to take that for job interviews over public transportation because sometimes public transportation can be unreliable and often has more delays. Um, also, many of these transit apps that I included offer um, a, you know, kind of an Uber estimate for the prices and some of the apps um, like Move It also offer where you can actually call you know, request an Uber from their app and it pops over to the Uber app. Okay, so the last category that I wanted to discuss, discuss for this presentation, I just kind of categorized as the other apps. So these are apps that are not necessarily designed for travel, um, but can be really, really useful while traveling. Um, and also, I think just in general for educators, these are really good apps to know about. Um, I didn't include specific money identifiers and QR readers. Um, they are useful for traveling, although there are several different options for those, too many for this presentation. So if you are interested in learning more about those, those search money identifiers or QR readers on any app store or any of the resources that I'll, I'll list at the end of this, and you can find several different options on those where you can read the reviews. So the apps listed in this category are the KNFB Reader, which is available on iPhones or Android, Vision Assist, which is available on iPhone, Be My Eyes, also available on iPhone, Tap Tap C or Be Specular, which is available on iPhone or Android, and Digitize, which is available on iPhone. KNFB Reader is the first one. It is a OCR, or Optical Character Recognition App, so similar to a scanning device that um, many people are blind and visually impaired use in a lot of different areas. Um, it, this app is commonly used in classroom or workplace to access print material, to have it read off in, in a speech format to you, um, but it definitely serves a great on app benefit. So I encourage a lot of my clients to use this for reading print material, such as a bus schedule, um, notices, you know, um, something, you know, maybe an update in a transit schedule or some kind of notice on a business, maybe if they're closed for the day, something like that, and then as well as signs. Now, it doesn't necessarily allow you to read street signs. It doesn't have, um, like, a distance camera on it, um, but if there's, you know, maybe something that's a, a little closer, you know, you might be able to read that kind of sign. So I have an app demonstrating the basic features of this, and this is just a, a piece of paper, you know, a, a notice that I had laying around in my office. KNSB Reader. Field of view report. Button. Field of view, the left edge and top edge. Of the page are visible. Rotated 88 degrees clockwise. Take picture. Button. Take, take picture, button. Back talking at Voinati Chaws. Computers for the Blind, CFTB, is pleased to announce the receipt of a generous grant to provide 1,000 button. Set play. Next sentence, button. Next is a 90% discount off of the retail price. Save document. But save document. But text field is at a save. But save. It will greatly increase their product. Okay, sorry about that video buffering. Um, but as you can see, it offers you know some really nice features for this. Um, one really unique feature is that it has the 
it gives information about how the page is oriented. For someone who is completely blind, that's a really, really useful feature. Um, it also allows you to save the document and it um, allows you to navigate easily through the document from paragraph to paragraph or sentence to sentence. Okay, um, Vision Assist is for low vision users, so it is a magnifier app similar to a, you know, the way a handheld magnifier would work, a handheld CCTV. So it is, um, there are a lot of different options. This is just, you know, one of the ones that I commonly use, but there's a lot of different options on Android and iPhone. Um, and it can be used to magnify the size of the print or signs while traveling. Um, but that also allows you to adjust the color contrast. And I have an, also a video just because I wanted to show the quality of the magnification and the features of this it you know really allows you to almost turn your app your phone into a handheld CCTV um, at a much much more affordable price and this app was the video starting now. Um, I'll go ahead and narrate what this one is doing because it doesn't, I don't have any voice features. Again, this is for low vision. So I, I've i switched through the different color options. It offers a black and white option and an inverse color. So now the, the magnification is white print on a black background and I have it on double size 2x and I'm scanning across the paper. Um, it offers kind of a fixed focus option, which stays focused on the app so it doesn't zoom in and out like the regular iPhone camera would. And it allows you to pause the image or, or freeze frame the image as well. Okay, um, Be My Eyes. This is a new app that, or a relatively new app within the last couple of years, um, that's very, very unique. Um, just a really great idea. It uses video calling to aid the blind and visually impaired. So um, the way it works is a they have a pool of volunteers. So the app actually, you know, allows people to to indicate whether they are someone who is visually impaired or sighted and interested in helping people who are visually impaired. So when the you know when a uh, blind or visually impaired user needs some sighted assistance, they go ahead and connect to this app, which is they're then paired to a volunteer and can get more information, whatever task they need. Um, it is just available on the iPhone right now, but they are developing an Android app. This is, you know, a really helpful app if someone gets disoriented because you can literally kind of scan around with the phone and be able to ask, you know, okay, what are the cross streets and the landmarks around me? Um, there's another app that I just want to know called CrowdViz that is a paid version of this and the, the only difference is that it's got kind of trained professionals that um, give the information. So here I have their um, video off of YouTube that does a really nice job of just kind of showing some of the features of the app.
So, as you can see in the app, obviously it can be used for a lot of different areas for, you know, for someone who's blind or visually impaired, um, but definitely very, very helpful for orientation and mobility. Be my eyes. Okay, tap tap C or B specular is very similar, except that instead of video, it uses photos. So that can be kind of nice because, you know, you may not always need to connect a video call or may not have the best um, connectivity where you can stream a video call. Um, so this is available on both platforms and um, there's two different apps. Uh, so you take a photo of something that you need described. Again, this can be very helpful if you're out and about and, you know, maybe need to have some kind of sign read or something like that. Um, the slight difference with B Specular, B Specular is a um, newer app, and the one feature that they've added to it is that it allows a user to add a voice message explaining what they need. Tap, tap, see, you just take a picture and then receive a message back of what's in the image. That can be kind of difficult because sometimes, you know, the information that you get back may be something, you know, oh, there's a white sign on a metal pole when really you actually want what's on the sign, you know, and not just, you know, that there's a sign there, so. Um, I have a video of the Bespecular app that kind of shows this as well. And this one's a very quick video. Okay, and then the last step that I wanted to include here is digitize. Um, so this one does have a QR code, QR code scanner feature, um, but the reason I include this over some of the other ones is because it also has a barcode scanner and is really, really great for shopping. Um, so you can scan different items in a store and receive information about it. Um, on the screen, I have a screenshot where they've looked up the barcode of a Bisquick pancake mix. Not only does it identify what it is, but it also gives you information for many of the things like the directions. Um, and then in addition, this allows you to record information about it. So you could even record your own directions if they're not on there. And you can make your own labels as well. Either you can purchase them offline or you can print them for free. Um, so you can label stuff like medicine bottles, whatnot. But in terms of O&M, I definitely um, show this to a lot of my clients that, you know, maybe have to do a lot of independent shopping, um, but sometimes have difficulty distinguishing between different items. And last but not least, I had to include an app for apps. So there really is an app for everything. Um, this one is an app for discovering apps for blind and blind and visually impaired people. So it's called the VIA. It's designed by the Braille Institute. It is um, a resource, so it divides it into categories for the apps such as navigation or environmental awareness. Um, and it gives a basic features of the app, but then also gives you reviews on the different apps. 
So it's a, a really, really nice way to explore the different apps that are out there and learn more information about them. So just real briefly, I want to touch on, on what the role of a service provider is in terms of all these apps. Um, so, so I really, you know, don't feel that, you know, depending on, on what role you're playing, you don't necessarily have to be an expert with all these apps. I just think that people have to have the basic understanding of some of the prominent apps and what functions they're used for. And that way you can be able to explode expose the apps to the clients based on what their need is, whether it be, you know, some sort of navigation app or, you know, maybe something more just designed to help them explore some of the areas around their city. Um, and then as well, you know, as informing them how to learn the app, I think it's, you know, really important to provide them structured opportunities to practice and learn the app and all the different features that are so, you know, and, and with my clients, you know, I always make sure to start in a, you know, a, a controlled area, something, you know, maybe that's not as busy so they can, you know, concentrate a little bit more on the app functionality and become comfortable with it before they, you know, go out and use it in the real world. So, um, I also think it's important to be able to give resources for further review of these apps. So. On that topic, here is a list of resources for more information about it. One that I um, want to draw note to is AppleViz. So this is a awesome, awesome guide for Apple apps that are designed for vision impaired. Again, gives you reviews and info about it. Um, and then I'm going to leave this on for a second, but just so you don't have to write down all of these different ones, I have created a tiny URL. Um, so you can actually just type this into your browser. So it's http colon backslash forward slash forward slash tinyurl.com forward slash orientation apps. And if you take that, it'll take if you type that into your browser, it'll take you to a web page that has all of the apps that I listed in this presentation as well as these resources. Um, for learning more about the apps with clickable links. So again, that's tinyurl.com slash orientation apps. And of course, I'd like to, you know, include my reference page for Foundations of Orientation and Mobility and Slides Carnival for the presentation tab. If anybody has any questions about any of the apps or any of the technology that I discussed in this presentation, you can reach me at Nick L, N-I-C-K-L, at Bosma.org. Thank you.